All right, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to once again to this edition of the Tech Drop-Ins. Right, I'm sure we have not been catching up for probably a month. Right, today we are definitely very excited right, to actually share with you how we're going to actually reduce a lot of the complexity you know, with our scale-out solutions with the NetBackup uh, Flex Scale. Well, how we're going to simplify things, especially I think for a lot of the existing NetBackup customers, I'm sure there are a lot out there today that join us. You probably will learn a lot of new stuff right? if you have not heard of NetBackup Flex Scale. How it actually helps to benefit your environment, you know, probably can relook at this new architecture that we have in the, in the market as well. So today, uh, joining me in this session, um, I actually have a few of my esteemed colleagues. Right uh, today, that I'll be presenting today is actually Philip. Philip is actually no stranger to all of us. I think probably has participated or presented in past tech drop-in sessions. Right, you know, right now he's our regional product manager for InfoScale and FlexScale. Right, of course, uh, technically he's also a very distinguished senior engineer, right? He was actually our region's uh, distinguished engineer within the organization as well. So uh, joining us on the panelists, you know, helping to answer a lot of your questions will be uh, David. David Echi is our architect that's based in Indonesia. And also Chi Chong is another of our architect that's based in uh, Malaysia, right? So if you have any questions, do feel free to bring it in the Q&A sessions or even towards uh, at the end of it, well, we may have open discussion to talk about some of these questions. Right. So again, uh, any best question for today, right? We we'll definitely want to reward you as well because as we listen more, as you get questions, we also want to understand, you know, what are the challenges, what are the questions, or even things that you want to know more. Of. So again, the best question for today, you know, from our selection, will stand to win a twenty-five dollar Amazon gift card that will come your way, you know, once we have the selection of the best question done, sent to you in shortly in a few days or weeks time. So. Next, I'm going to pass the time over to Philip right, to get him to share with us the benefits, the capabilities of this new way of uh, deploying NetBackup. So over to you, Philip. Thank you. So welcome all. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, so I'm going to um, talk about uh, where it does flex scale, what drove us to architect, uh, what are the uh, key criteria we put into uh, developing flex scale. Um, then I will uh, show you how you would deploy and use flex scale uh, for doing data protection in your environment. And then I'll also go into some technology bits as well. Right. So if you're a geek, um, you want to know how things hang together, I'll go to that. Uh, keep sending your questions through uh, the Q&A uh, panel on, on the session uh, panel that you can find and uh, my colleagues will answer them on the fly and uh, we'll take up some questions at the end, um, those common questions. So what our customers have told us is that um, with data protection today, um, when we ask them questions about what are the best ways that we could help um, mitigate and solve their challenges, they, they, uh, they, we, we took their requirements and put them into three boxes. Um, so one of the challenges uh, is that, uh, you know, having silos, having uh, tools, having different methods and means creates confusion. Um, it's difficult to track what's going on. What's the single source of truth? So administering with tools, different products um, becomes challenging. Um, even if it is software and hardware and treating them separately, and even if it is components that are deployed on separate locations and trying to make them work together was a challenge. Um, ransomware and security concern is the other uh, top of mind topic with all the key um, executives and operations people and administrators we talked. Um, and then scalability, uh, everyone is growing. Um, uh, data doesn't get lesser. Every day we get new data. Um, so we are still collecting more. Uh, even the data sets that we used to deal with in the past have now grown bigger. Um, so customers have been also telling us give us an easy way to scale and scale easily scale without the um, you know causing downtime uh, and and give us automation as well on the same time so these were the key architectural uh, principles that we 
uh, incorporated into architecting um, uh, flex scale, um, net back of flex scale. So with that, I want to um, get your idea uh, to, uh, to capture your priorities. So at this time, uh, Trudy, can we bring up a, the poll? So you should see a poll panel there. Uh, pick uh, what is most important for you uh, from a backup deployment uh, perspective. Um, you have five choices there. Uh, pick the most important one. And if you, if, if it seems like everything is important, you have a choice for that as well. All right, uh, Trudy, how's the poll going? So we've got half, about half of the audience has, has participated. So if we could give it just a few more seconds, All right. for everyone to, to join in. All right, I think we can um, end the poll now. So I'll end the poll now and I'll share the results. All right, that's great. Okay, <laughs> okay. So we have an astounding, uh, uh, the clear winner is everything is important, uh, all of the above. Um, all right, so thanks for that feedback. So let's, I'll, I'll go through this, um, um, the three uh, targets and, and what we think um, our perspective and our message with, you know, how to, how we plan to um, solve them. So administration of, of silos, different solutions, right? It, it creates complexity. Uh, you need to have different skills and you need to have different uh, vendors to deal with. Um, and, and the integration becomes a problem. And the more silos you have, of course, the cost of maintaining the environment um, goes um, increases, right? You don't get to leverage um, the ability to share components. Uh, for, ex for example, um, if you could, the more you could share and the more data that is uh, put into one pool, the better optimization of the data that is possible. And data sprawl, also creates um, unpredictable data growth challenges, right? Um, so um, silos create these main challenges as we see it. And in this day and age, um, you know, keeping carbon footprint down, doing more with less is even more important than before with, and you, know, you can see, I, I suppose all of you are, have faced some sort of an environmental challenge this year as well. Um, Ransomware recovery, uh, it's unfortunately not about if, but it's kind of like when is it going to happen and how best could you be prepared if and when that happens, right? Um, now, when and if that happens, what you want to do is, you know, how fast can you get back to um, a recoverable and operational state? Uh, the everyone's recommendation is to keep a backup, right? So customers are being asked to take backups by any, any analyst um, that you can consult regarding how to face this mitigation. And sometimes governments also recommend that you must do, um, you know, three to one uh, retention strategies for backups, etc. cetera. Uh, but uh, how good is a backup if recovery is going to take a long time, right? And recovery of not just one or two, recovery of doing lots of recoveries in parallel at the same time. Um, and how confident are you about the security of your backup environment, right? Um, what if someone gets into the backup environment um, and does something bad, or is the environment vulnerable to that? So that is another concern that, uh, security information officers are very concerned with, not just having a backup, a backup that is resilient and that can mitigate um, cyber attacks. Scalability. Um, often 
data protection solutions become a bit difficult to scale. Um, you know, scaling data protection requires, you know, usual investment of components um, and these scale or uh, adding additional components often lead to silos, right? So, and disjointed uh, components and, you know, a bit here, a bit there also creates different management uh, challenges. You need to manage um, the cloud environment differently. You need to manage um, um, the orchestrator different versus the engines that are used for uh, backups. And also um, this creates portability uh, challenges for data as well, portability, uh, upgrade challenges um, as well. And when the data protection environment itself needs its life cycle uh, upgrade um, uh, requirement to be met. And often when you scale, resiliency has to be compromised. Um, so these are the main goals we wanted to solve um, with our flex scale solution as well. So with that, um, now that I discussed the design goals, um, I'll give you an overview of what Veritas flex scale and what a deployment of uh, Veritas flex scale would look like. So if you work with um, uh, Veritas Net Backup, for example, or most backup solutions that are out there, generally they form a tiered architecture, right? So the general Net Backup uh, data protection architecture um, consisted of um, a master server or what we call as a primary server. That is the brains behind the show. Uh, that uh, is where you define your backup policies, retention rules, et cetera. And, and so, and, and the next level of media servers, whose job was to collect the data from the various different types of clients that you want the data protected from. And you brought these uh, clients' data into a collection of media servers, and the media servers wrote them to disk, wrote them to uh, tapes, and wrote them to um, clouds, uh, for example. Right? So this is what is most commonly referred to as a three-tier architecture. So with FlexScale, we are consolidating the primary server and the media servers into one single complex. Right? The single complex is what we call as um, Veritas FlexScale. So you deploy FlexScale, and it's a collection of all these components in one uh, uh, box to deal with. With the clients that you have in your environment, you point them all towards one flex scale cluster uh, if it means per data center. So that's how one of the ways that we simplify an architecture for uh, using net backup. Now, Veritas flex scale users tried and tested net backup, right? So net backup that you always knew, that is you know, now uh, being in the magic uh, quadrant uh, recognized by Gartner for 17 years consecutively is the product that is incorporated into Veritas Flex Scale. Um, as in the past, you may have had to deal with a primary server and a collection of media servers. Now you have to deal with one single flex scale cluster that you point all your clients to. So that's the main uh, method of simplification we enable you with the tiering simplification. So let's look at how flex scale hangs together. Now the basic deployment of a flex scale uh, environment starts with a four node cluster. So there, uh, we have a set of certified hardware and the hardware um, is uh, from third party vendors. So if you are deploying a Veritas Flex Scale, uh, Veritas will recommend to you a, a set of hardware we pre-tested with other vendors. Uh, the vendors we work with today, um, we work with HP and Dell as vendors and when you want to deploy FlexScale, we will say you can use this particular uh, configuration of an HP or a Dell server uh, with this set of adapters. And, and those are the components that you deploy 
to stand up uh, Veritas Flex Scale cluster. So you start with this four node clustered setup. Inside Flex Scale, you have the Net Backup Flex Scale software. Now, if you have come across Net Backup or Net Backup Flex in the past, with Net Backup in the Flex format, what we did was we containerized the net backup solution into microservices, right? So you have a containerized version of the net backup media server and the primary server, which is acting as the net backup flex scale software platform for a flex scale um, cluster. On top of that, we also have a deduplication uh, storage pool, a single deduplication storage pool that spans these four. Um, uh, components of hardware that you deploy, right? So net backup, as you know it, that you have been using maybe the past 20 odd years is the same software capability that you get for data protection on top. And coupled with that, we've also include a load balancer. Now, what does the load balancer do? Now your workloads are your net backup clients, right? So your clients are you know, scattered throughout your data center. And I said, you don't have to worry about which server handles the job. You point your uh, workloads to a single flex scale cluster and the, the requests are received by this load balancer and the load balancer assigns the specific job or the backup stream to be processed by the least busy of the pieces of hardware that is standing under the flex scale cluster. Um, and you can interact with the flex scale cluster um, using um, the net backup web interface, or you can interact with REST API mechanisms as well. Um, if you're a fan of the older net backup Java interface, you can continue to use that as well. So all the net backup user interfaces that you are known to, uh, used to, um, is what you would point to the flex scale cluster. So all the data can be stored, deduplicated, and optimized within the four node uh, cluster. Now, the data doesn't have to stay there. You can still export data and store copies of data for longer term purposes um, in your favorite uh, public cloud vendor. We have a whole host of public cloud vendors that NetBackup supports. So all the NetBackup supported cloud vendors uh, can be used uh, with, uh, with uh, a Veritas Flex scale deployment for retention of copies for longer term retention purposes. Um, as you can, um, if you have been in touch with a, a ransomware analyst recommendation, you know, the basic recommendation is you need to have um, uh, three copies, at least two copies on two different locations in your data center, and at least one copy offsite. So the offsite copy uh, copy could be stored in a in a cloud vendor. And if you are not working with a cloud vendor, Veritas also provides a cloud-based retention environment we call as Veritas Recovery Vault. So if you uh, are not working with a cloud vendor and if you want to go to cloud, we provide a simplified uh, solution for that as well. So Veritas also have a hosted cloud target that, is, uh, that also has a simplified consumption model as well, right? So um, typically in cloud deployments, you have to pay for capacity and you have to pay for network uh, egress and all that. Um, all that is bundled under a single consumption model with the Veritas Recovery Vault. So the Veritas Recovery Vault could be a target that you use as well. If you want to store copies of data on tapes, you can still do that as well. All you will do is you'll have your tape library attached to a NetBackup media server that you might have already. You can incorporate that uh, into a flex scale cluster and create copies of backups on tape media as well. So that option is always open uh, as well. So let's look at some deployment options for a net backup flex scale um, in your environment. So one simple way of deploying flex scale, like I uh, mentioned before, is you could deploy this cluster. It comes with the primary server or the master server, as we used to call it and the media servers, and that could be a single net backup domain. 
that you can use. So this is one option that you could um, uh, consume. And this is ideal if you're standing a net backup from scratch and you never used net backup before. But if you're one who already has a Veritas net backup in the environment and you have um, a primary server that is, you know, you're already happy with um, and you've been using it for quite a while, you could incorporate a flex scale cluster as a storage target for all your backup clients as well. So you have the option one model of deployment or the option two model of deployment as well, right? So both options are possible. Now there is, of course, you could also say a third option, which I've not uh, visualized here. So um, a flex scale cluster can have a flex scale cluster acting as a collection of media servers as well. Sometimes um, we have customers who would want to isolate pools of data and keep pools of data separate from one to another. Uh, for sometimes it's compliance reasons. Uh, customers will say that production data and, and test and dev can't be mixed. So um, it, it could be that. It could be sometimes DMZ and, and internal data can't be mixed. So if you have requirements of that sort, you can have a one flex scale cluster, use a second flex scale cluster as a second uh, retention environment as well. So it's quite flexible in the way you can build a flex scale architecture for data protection. The usability point of view, um, your user interface um, is you have this single point of view um, web console that you will interact with. And when you log into the NetBackup Flex Scale console, um, you know, of course, these panels are movable. You can move them and make them small, big, the way you want. Um, you have a dashboard view of, you know, what's good, bad, and ugly. Gets a quick view of, you know, how big um, your storage pool is and how big the catalog, uh, NetBackup metadata catalog is. Uh, gives you a view of the security posture of your cluster. Uh, if you're using um, uh, the stick mode or if you're using the immutable uh, the retention feature, uh, the state of the cluster, um, you know, how, if, are the nodes all healthy um, or if there's any trouble you need to look into, um, gives you a real-time performance view as well of how the cluster's CPU memory resources are consumed. Um, and how, what kind of backup throughput you are getting overall. Um, you get the licensing posture and um, other um, auto support uh, data as well. So on the left-hand side of the dashboard, you'll see all the net backup usual user interface point of view as well. So you can click on, you know, for example, the activity monitor and you can get the net backup activity monitor view. You can manage policies, all that. So truly, all you have for a flex scale cluster is a single user interface to look at, not only to keep track of the operational infrastructure, but also to keep track of your backup activities as well. So with that, I'll go a bit in depth and talk about some of the architectural and technical components um, of how flex scale components are piece together. So if you are a techie at this stage, um, and if you wondered, this is uh, right. Um, how does all this work together? You'll be in for this session. So what you see over here is the level of erasure coding method that we use. Now, of course, we are, uh, it's a cluster that has a lot of storage, right? Now, the the traditional way of dealing with storage for resiliency purposes was based on RAID adapters and you know, RAID controllers, or sometimes storage uh, arrays and storage controllers that was attached to the backup infrastructure. Because flex scale was designed to start and scale um, with addition of nodes, it was architected based on erasure coded method of storage resiliency from day one. Now, um, what you see in the red box over here highlighted is eight colon four. 
So eight colon four uh, level of erasure coding method is what Veritas Flex Scale uh, uses. Now you might wonder uh, why, why, why am I talking about a four colon two and a five colon two? Um, there are other uh, alternative, well, I'll say there are other backup solutions out there who have a similar architecture as well. Um, I just wanted to show you that what we use is a very high level of resiliency uh, versus what most others use. So we use eight colon four. Um, so the basic construct is, um, is built using 12 disk, right? So if you have a cluster uh, built of, let's say six nodes, as in this example, a, a write request gets written to 12 disk that spans 12, uh, six nodes, right? So what you get is a very high performance write commit. And reads can also be processed in parallel uh, from these individual spindles, right? So uh, this is the level of erasure coding, and this helps us um, be very resilient and performant at the same time. And the durability level um, for uh, component failure is also very high with the eight colon four method we use. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, FlexScale is built on a dockerized version of uh, net backup um, media server and primary server components. So in a, in a four node cluster, you will have a container monitoring mechanism that will keep track of the flex scale containers, right? The net backup containers. Um, it will keep track of availability. It will keep track of performance and other criteria. And you will have uh, the primary service running in any one of the four nodes at a given time. Right, and you have um, the deduplication engine, and you have the media server engine uh, containers running in the nodes at the same time. The load balancer will run on any one of the nodes, and the load balancer will receive the request for the backup stream, and it will associate the backup stream to a candidate um, a deduplication engine and a media server for processing purposes. So this is the basic. Um, construct of what uh, a containerized uh, flex scale cluster would look like. Now let's look at some levels of resiliency. Um, so should something fail, uh, for example, um, a failure is detected. What we do is the failure is detected and the remaining cluster members will take over that service and continue to operate, right? So, you know, nothing will go down and on a four node cluster, an entire node can be down and your backups or recoveries will continue on, without any interruption, right? So then you won't lose any data for a single node failure for a four node cluster or flex scale. That's the level of, uh, level of resiliency we've built in with, uh, the flex scale architecture uh, today. So I've been now talking for about some 30 odd minutes. Um, I'd like to ask, uh, hey, Daniel, um, are we going through all questions all that fine? Yep, definitely the questions are coming well. But however, I've got a quick question over at this section for you. Okay. So what happened you know, when these containers are failing over to the running workloads? All right, uh, good question. Um, so primary server or an back and mask server um, failover is nothing new technically. We've had the ability to provide clustered master servers for some time. Now, uh, that's a similar mechanism that happens here, uh, Daniel. So the, the primary server fairly is detected and it's failed over very quickly to another available server. Um, now, um, there could be some interruptions for a running backup job uh, because the primary server essentially has to be started, restarted, and some jobs can detect the restart and continue and some cannot. But um, Daniel, um, with the current release of NetBackup 10.1, um, we released a feature called um, a primary server resiliency um, for 
for handling this kind of request. So essentially what happens is the client that was backing up to a media server uh, will be trying to send the metadata to the primary server. Now, for the moment that the primary server goes down, it spends, let's say, 30 seconds to go to next available server and start up. Um, the client can, can't find the primary server. So we built a capability, Daniel, uh, which now will handle this client metadata at the media server, and the media server will cache the, the data set and send it to the primary server when the primary server is available again. So technically, Daniel, now we can give an uninterrupted backup experience uh, using this combination of capabilities. I hope that answers your question, all right? Okay, uh, so keep sending through questions. Um, now, okay, what happens if that node can't be you know, recovered? So if, if the node can't be recovered, you can bring in uh, a replacement node and just incorporate it into the cluster. So in fact, um, what you see here is an illustration of how you would do it on the FlexScale user interface. Um, so you have a four node cluster over here and you can see one node is like, you know, this, it's not reporting any status. So you can click the node there and you can add a new node um, to a cluster. And we have a process called rescan the infrastructure. So on a rescan, it can find, all right, so there's a new node that is available. And you can go and click this option of either trying to start the failed node or replace node. So you can kick off the replace node process and the replace node process can go in and take over the failed fail node number 244 and replace it with node number 245. So replacement of failed components can be as simple as that. Now, what's important to remember is none of this interrupts your backup and recovery experience. Your backup and recovery tasks can continue um, while all this is happening in the background. Okay, so now when uh, we bring up the uh, the other server, uh, we will activate the the deduplication service on it. We will activate the media server on it, and then we'll uh, populate that with the data set that it needs to have, so that you know, all the nodes have you know the shared deduplication pool, and it'll be good on business from that point onwards. Now. The other place where you might also want to add a node is when you want to scale out, right? So you started out with four and now you decide, right, okay, I need more capacity. I need more processing capacity. I need more data capacity. So at that point, you can bring in another node and do what is called an add node to the cluster. So similar to what we did before, you will rescan the environment. So you'll have a new node connected to the, to the FlexScale network and rescan will locate it. And once the rescan locates it, you can go and say, add this node to the cluster and off you go. So adding and scaling out can be as simple as that. And this is also not a non-disruptive task. So scaling out, of course, doesn't disrupt running jobs as well. When it's fully added in, um, you don't have to change anything with your backup policies. Um, the intelligent load balancer will seamlessly identify the added node and send additional jobs to that node. And the data set that was contained in the four nodes will be redistributed uh, to incorporate the fifth node so that we end up with a final cluster that has an almost equal representation of capacity. So it's not like the new node has nothing on it. It will be populated with data uh, on a very low priority basis. Okay, so I've been talking about, you know, how we grow and scale, etc. And I said, you know, we start with the four node cluster. So, what you do with this hyperconverged infrastructure is that um, you know all you have is a node with 12 disks on it. So there are 12 hard drives that we use for deduplicated data storage. 
It also has uh, NVMe uh, storage that is used for storing of the net backup catalog. It also has SSDs that are used for the operating system as well. So there are no external storage or JBODs or storage arrays associated in a flex scale cluster. So when you want to grow, you add a node and it scales up with capacity and you keep adding nodes like that. And you know that's how you go up to um, a flex scale cluster, um, which can be as big as um, um, 16 nodes um, today. Um, so, um, Daniel, we are good with time. Yeah, maybe a quick question over at this session. I really love, you know, how it actually scales up easily. I can just add note automatically, and back end it just manages everything for me like magic. Right, probably. <laughs> so, you know, now flex scale scales to sixteen nodes. So, if I go beyond that, if I were to get to the full cluster capacity, so what should I be doing? What do I get? You know, if I get which okay. Day? Good, good, good question. Now, um, flex scale product has been, uh, Veritas has been um, uh, selling this product for just over 18 months now. And we have customers that have started with four, gone to six, gone to seven, some who have gone to 10, um, 10 nodes as well. So um, now um, we, uh, we have not had someone go up to full 16 yet, but we are getting ready for you know, adding more capacity. Um, so Daniel, what we plan to do is, uh, at the moment, the, the, the version of Flexscale we sell today is up to 16 nodes. And by end of this year, we plan to go to the next update of the firmware. And when we go to the next update of the firmware, we plan to add support for another eight additional nodes. So um, 16 can be, 24 in a matter of you know less than six months. So that's that's our current plan. And we have ambitions to grow by adding even more uh, storage um, towards later part of the year. Um, so there is no technical upper bound, um, um, Daniel, um, but we, you know, Veritas is a very um, conservative company when it comes to um, containing boundaries. And we will only, um, have customers use safe boundaries that we have tested and are happy with for performance and scalability. Um, so, so don't worry, Daniel. Um, if 16 is the border you are going to hit, we'll support uh, plus eight more um, in within six months or so, and we'll go beyond that later as well. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so uh, now, if you have been using Net Backup. You know, the most important part of the net backup infrastructure is, you know, maintaining all the backup recovery points and the recovery points and your policies are all still stored in the net backup catalog, right? So the net backup catalog and its resiliency and its protection is very important for um, the keeping track of um, what happens in a net backup environment. So what we've done in a flex scale environment is, um, like I mentioned before, uh, we store the flex scale uh, net backup catalog in the most performant piece of storage we could buy from the market. So we are using NVMe storage. So each node has two NVMe disk drives um, that are mirrored within the node. And then we mirror between the nodes as well. So, with the initial deployment, you will have um, about 11 terabytes of catalog space available on a four node cluster, even with one hot spare just waiting there. Now, as you add nodes to your flex scale cluster, you know, you are backing up more, you are dealing with more jobs, you are retaining more data. Of course, your data footprint grows. And as your data footprint grows, the net backup catalog space also grows with it. So, you know, this is one less worry for you. You don't have to worry about, you know, storage and performance and, you know, dealing with, and how do I maintain the catalog? Uh, the catalog storage space is automatically taken care of by us. And that's another one less worry for you um, in, uh, um, in a flex scale deployment as you scale out. 
So it goes on like that, you know, as you keep growing and, you know, by the time you go to 16 nodes or, you know, 24 nodes in the future, you will have a very big catalog space that we support for uh, storing of your important catalog data. Uh, not just that, uh, catalog backup, catalog resiliency and catalog recovery is also a very important aspect of your backup infrastructure to maintain and capture all recovery points. So with FlexScale, uh, we do something special. The special thing we do here is, you know, you can do your regular catalog backups. You can store your catalog backups on disk. You can store them on tapes. You can store them in cloud. All you like to do with the catalog protection mechanisms you do today, you can carry on doing them as well. On top of that, with a basic FlexScale deployment, we also incorporate a, a snapshot-based uh, catalog protection mechanism as well. So on a regular frequency, we create a set of snapshots. So the snapshot base and the snapshots are all on NVMe. Um, so the snapshot-based catalog protection mechanism is another level of insurance should you have to roll back to a recovery point. Beyond that, if you implement a disaster recovery um, you know, um, architecture with FlexScale, we will also create a replicated copy in another location as well. So the moment you stand up a FlexScale cluster, even if you have not configured a catalog backup, you will have a snapshot-based catalog protection mechanism activated immediately on day one. Right? So catalog protection is highest in priority. Um, and if you have a four node cluster, you might ask what levels of resiliency can you expect? So on a four node cluster, as I mentioned before, um, any single node can be out and nothing happens. Your environment is still up and running. A node can, uh, an entire node and an entire hard disk can go away or an, a node or any two hard disks can go away or even any three drives can go away. Nothing happens, it still keeps running. Right. Um, so levels of resiliency and depending on how many nodes that you, um, as you deploy um, more nodes, the levels of resiliency, of course, increases. So if you, if you have a 12 node flex scale cluster, for example, you can have entirely two nodes not available and your backups will still continue to operate and be available um, as if like nothing happened. So the more nodes you have in your cluster, the higher the levels of resiliency for the entire backup infrastructure. Um, so as opposed to um, looking at disaster recovery capabilities, now, if you are a, one who have an active active data center, so an active active data center is um, you have workloads that are equally distributed between say data center one and data center two. Um, and you want to have all of this managed under a single NIN backup domain. So if you wanted to implement an architecture like this with FlexScale, you will stand up um, one FlexScale cluster in one data center, another FlexScale cluster in a, another data center, and you would relate them to each other by activating something called the FlexScale disaster recovery mode. So the moment you activate the disaster recovery configuration uh, for two flex scale clusters, the architecture underneath automatically implements uh, a backup optimized duplication mechanism between the two sites. So should an entire site go down, the other site will have an equal amount, um, equal uh, collection of the backup images for recovery purposes. And we also implement a heartbeat mechanism so that each side would watch for each other. Um, and the most important thing, the net backup catalog we mentioned. So uh, on a single domain architecture, you have one uh, at point of administration where your uh, master server or primary server is located. So if your primary server is in site B, for example, it will have a replicated copy of the catalog available in site A. So should site B go down, we can just swing over to site A and you can do a full recovery or continue backing up workloads on site A as if nothing happened. 
So this is one level of an architecture you could deploy with a Veritas Flex scale. The second mode is also possible. This is most common in active failover data centers if that is what you plan to use. So if you plan to use an active failover kind of a disaster recovery arrangement between two data centers, you could also deploy uh, flex scale using net backups auto image replication mechanism as well. So with auto image replication mechanism implemented, what you have is um, a self-contained flex scale cluster on site one and a self-contained uh, flex scale cluster on site two. And they will have, they will cross replicate between them a copy of backups for recovery purposes. So site A is backups and the backup recovery data will be available in site B and vice versa. So in that manner, should one site completely go down, um, you will be not only be able to continue backups that the site B was doing, but you will be also be able to recover copies of data that site A sent over to site B. So you have flexible options for disaster recovery um, if you are using uh, flex scale deployment as well. Um, so uh, the other important aspect I wanted to cover is, you know, ransomware, which brings top of mind, uh, customers are now looking to implement immutable retention of backup copies so that, you know, uh, bad actors can't even, should they get into the backup infrastructure, should they try to damage the backup data um, by trying to delete whatnot, you have the assurance of immutable backup retention that you can implement with uh, Veritas Flex Scale as well. So your data copy stored in deduplicated format can be stored with immutable backup retention capability in net backup as well. So you can set uh, you know, a level of retention, and then you know, you'll be assured that within those retention criteria, no one can go in and modify or delete or do whatnot. So uh, it's not a simple process. And of course, you know, uh, me telling you that we have immutable retentions itself is not good enough. Um, so we have an industry accepted um, third party who has done the validation and we've been certified with um, you know, a couple of uh, security industry certifications that you see here. The certification authority uh, company is um, an organization called Cohasset. So they are accepted for what they do in the um, United States market. Uh, we use them to cross certify and do uh, you know, pen testing of our solution as well. So rest assured, if you store your backups, they can be quite safely stored and you know you can be guaranteed that they will be there when you want to go and get um, data recovered from. So, um, um, and, and the compliance clock is an important factor as well. Um, now, one of the bad ways that uh, bad actors have been um, attacking backups is if you say a backup is to be retained for, let's say, you know, until December of 2020, um, some of the bad acting methods have been involved, even you know, people trying to modify the clock. So they'll then they'll take the clock forward to let's say January 2023, and the backup infrastructure can be fooled to think that oh, I, I'm now January, I don't need the December copy, and then it can self. Um, expire the backup copy. Um, so a compliance clock means it's a clock that cannot be modified, that is resilient and is aware of these kind of changes is also implemented with the flex scale architecture. So it's more than just um, worm storage. It's, it's uh, all other aspects of cyber resiliency uh, that has been built and thought uh, and built into this infrastructure as well. So you're buying something that is safe and being tested and proven by a third party as well. So um, lots of uh, analysts are talking about zero trust model. Uh, 
anything that you require uh, with resiliency for uh, a zero trust model can be implemented using a net backup flex scale infrastructure, um, like, you know, remove root, um, intrusion prevention and um, intrusion um, uh, detection and prevention. That's what this IDS and IPS um, bubble is talking about. So it's predominantly um, Veritas appliances have had um, intrusion prevention technology and intrusion detection technology way back going to a year 2010 when the first Veritas backup appliance was introduced. Uh, that tradition carries on with Veritas Flex Scale. Uh, it's, it's almost the only backup appliance that has an intrusion prevention and detection capability built in. Um, you can restrict uh, remote ac access. You can implement, um, you know, strict password rules and, you know, password um, expiration and uh, change uh, me mechanisms as per the stick uh, platform forms. Um, there are firewall blocking services. There is role-based access control, so you can assign um, workload administrators to come and just see their workloads and deal with them on a self-service basis. Um, encryption, if you want, all kinds of encryption mechanisms are now possible with NetBackup and Veritas Flex Scale. Uh, immutable retention, the compliance clock, um, isolation and security for containers, uh, networks, I mean, anything and everything that you would ever want to have in a zero trust model, you get in a one simple solution you can implement. And uh, we now support uh, FIPS 140-2 uh, compliance level of security as well, if that's um, a level of assurance you are looking for. So with that, um, I would like to ask you one more um, set of questions to get what you thought of um, um, what I went through today. So with that, uh, Trudy, thank you. So if you captured what I was going on today about all these different aspects of it, and if you had to pick one of these as the most important thing that strikes you as the problem that is solved for you, I'll ask you to choose that one. So it's, yeah, there's no right or wrong here, right? Uh, you are not being judged for you know what choice of what you make. Um, it could be one versus the other, but pick the one that is most important to you. All right, uh, Daniel. Uh, at this point, um, if there are any questions, I can look at those as well. Trudy, how is the poll going? So we have about 50% participation. So if we could give it a little bit longer, if everyone just um, have, a, have a go at the poll, that would be brilliant. All right. A bit of uh, you know, your thinking cap on. Uh, what is most important to you out of this? Um, it's not a right or wrong, uh, but we are just looking at what's most important to you. All right, shall we uh, share the poll results now? Sure. Here we go. Thank you. So we have, very good. Um, so I see that backup storage being scalable, available, and um, is, is, is the most important thing for you. Uh, and next up from there is level of security and immutable retention comes up at number two, almost the same as scalability. Great. Catalog protection. So yes, I see some of you have picked the catalog protection, resiliency, failover as another aspect. Disaster recovery, making disaster recovery easy um, has been chosen by a couple of you as well. Thank you for giving us your feedback uh, and if you were in this session today, you, you would have found that we can solve all of these. But what I was looking for is um, what is most important to you uh, personally. So with that, 
Um, time for any other questions I can take. Um, Chichong, uh, David? Yep. All good? Yep. Yeah, maybe let me uh, get some questions. You know, we have been answering some of the questions live. You know, Chicho and David has been helping. Okay. So, let me put up one question, you know, for all of us to also understand one of the questions as well. Right, so one of the questions from uh, Nizam was actually, you know, how when they were to propose flex scale, right? Can the master server be also inside the device? You know, is there a need for actually external master server, right? You shared that, you know, that we can actually have mass external master server. But is there really a need for that as well? Then there's a second part of the question. He's also asking, you know, um, he, people have been using the NetPack appliances for quite a number of years, right? And in the last few years, also introduced the Flex appliances, the Flex scale as well. So how do we, you know, differentiate, you know, between these uh, storages, uh, these uh, integrated backup appliances, you know, when would be a good fit for which kind of scenario as well? Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, you can deploy Flex scale. And you can have the primary server inside the cluster, and you don't have to worry about managing the uh, primary server ever after that. Right? So um, you don't need to have an external primary server. You can deploy Flex Scale, and you can have your media servers. Every node is a media server, every node is a deduplication engine, and all the storage inside the node contributes to the deduplication storage pool. And the primary server can be floating in any one of them at any given time. And you don't even have to know where it is. Because when you have a cluster, we give you a virtual name to deal with. You point to the virtual name and you log in and you administer, you manage, you get the visibility to backups, right? So the easiest way of running the master server or the primary server is all-in-one uh, deployment. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Uh, yes, we've been going through, I will say, a bit of a journey of an evolution of deployment options. Um, you know, NetBackup prior to year 2010 was just software, and you had to get our software and deploy, you know, go shopping for hardware and put, um, you know, software and hardware together and operate NetBackup. And year 2010 onwards, we made life easy for everyone by introducing backup appliances, operators appliances. Um, so that simplified things uh, somewhat more. And then um, uh, about five years back, we introduced the Flex appliances family where we containerized. Where, so the objective there was multiple instances and roles of net backup that you could very easily operate in a Flex uh, architecture. Um, but all the... Uh, uh, in all along the journey, uh, our deduplication pools were contained on a vertically scalable architecture. Um, so that served fine. Um, but we still had this um, challenge that some customers told us, well, now, if I have more than one deduplication pool in a data center, I have to still go and get certain clients to go to one deduplication pool versus another. So. We solve that problem also with Flex Scale, right? So we give you one deduplication pool is all you need to have per data center kind of flexibility. So I would say Flex Scale takes Flex to its next ultimate level. Hyperconverge, no storage to manage, um, everything bundled together. So makes things even more easier uh, is our goal. Um, I hope that helps. Daniel, um, and to the person who asked the question. Yep, yeah, definitely that uh, helps. So Nisa, I hope that uh, that answer you know helps to uh, address your query. You know, if you definitely have any further query, do reach out to us. You know, we definitely can uh, double click on that to share more in details as well. Yeah, and uh, this email address. Keep note of that. That email address is the simple email address that we use for all our tech talks. So keep track of that, uh, just send any questions you have, um, which you couldn't ask, or if you were watching or reading this from a recording, um, that's the email that you can continue to interact with us. Yep. So, with right, that, um, thank you. <laughs> thanks, Phil. So that takes us to the top of the hour. We hope that uh, you have really learned a lot from this session that Phil has done for us. Right, with flex scale, never backup flex scale, simple, easy to use, easy to scale out. 
takes away a lot of your overheads, you know, especially for uh, any existing customers out there or even new customers that are, you know, that are not with NetBack out yet. Right? This is definitely a very exciting uh, new solution that we have for our customers. So definitely look towards to having more conversations with you. Do reach out to us. We're going to have uh, more conversations on this with you as well. So thank you for your time on this. So definitely a respect to all of you with the best question of the day. And I'll be reaching out to the winner for that with the Amazon gift card. So thank you and appreciate everybody's time for this. So we hope to see you again next month on the next month's tech drop, tech drop-ins as well. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Thank you, everyone.